Good morning and welcome to this morning's live session on student well-being. Just before we start, we have a couple of housekeeping notes for you to be aware of. Firstly, this event is being recorded live and there's also a live Q&A function running throughout this presentation. Just to the right of your screen, you'll be able to submit your questions and we'll try and get through as many as we can towards the end of the session. If you see a question that you'd like the answer to as well, just like it and we'll try and get to that at the end. And now over to the main presentation with Joanna and David from our student wellbeing team. Good morning, my name is Dave and I'll be doing this presentation this morning with my colleague Joanna. We really want you to be successful in, and enjoy your time at university and we're here to support you with anything that may impact on your academic performance or your experience as a student. The presentation will explain how our experience wellbeing teams at Derby and Buxton provide support to all students. So uh, I'll pass over to Joanna now, my colleague, who will explain a bit more about the support we provide. Um, hello, good morning, everybody. It's great to have you all here. Uh, my name is Joanna and I'm a mental health practitioner working at Health and Wellbeing team. Just to explain you a little bit about the support that is available for students at University of Derby, um, let me start with explaining a little bit about the structure. Um, there is an on-site GP surgery at Caddleston Road, uh, which is called Park Medical Practice. Uh, students often call it uh, PMP for short. Uh, this GP practice is the same as any other NHS uh, general practice, except that it only offers its services to students of University of Derby uh, who live within the city uh, boundary. The GPs and nurses are experienced in meeting the health needs of, of student population. Um, you, can, you can register online um, at to the surgery uh, by completing online registration form. The form is available in many different languages. Uh, maybe it's a good idea to do so during your induction week if, if you would like to. Um, there is a student wellbeing centre that is based at Kedleston Road um, on Derby campus. At the moment, student, student wellbeing centre is working remotely, uh, but that might change in the future with the government guidelines, guidance. Um, student wellbeing centre is staffed with dedicated and passionate um, staff who are always happy to provide information and guidance on any issues relating to student wellbeing. You can self-refer for counselling at the centre or you can book yourself for a well-being appointment with, with one of our um, practitioners. So if there is anything that is having a negative impact on your well-being and on your education, please talk to, talk to us. Please come and see staff at Student Wellbeing Centre um, and they will be able to provide you um, information or general advice or they can signpost you um, to other services internally or externally um, and or they can book a well-being appointment to discuss your personal um, needs and the support that is available. Um, Student Wellbeing Centre, as I mentioned, can, can book you for, for a wellbeing appointment and that would be with one of the following teams, Health and Wellbeing Team and Inclusivity and Wellbeing Team. Health and Wellbeing Team uh, is staffed with experienced mental health practitioners um, who, who's got expertise in working with students um, with emotional difficulties, with um, any mental health conditions or autism or Asperger's. Um, inclusivity and Wellbeing Team uh, is staffed with um, practitioners and nurses who have um, expertise in long-term medical conditions and disabilities. Um, expertise in um, providing support to deaf students or students with visual impairments or any other sensory impairments. Um, that team also supports students with uh, specific learning differences such as dyslexia. Um, also care leavers and estranged students can, can get support from that team. 
uh, and carers, um, I mean students who, who have um, caring responsibilities, can get support from either of those teams um, as appropriate. Um, we would strongly like to encourage our international students to also reach for support if they feel they're struggling. We are aware that international students might um, might face additional pressures such as culture change, being far away from home, feeling homesick. Um, so there is a student well-being center that you can uh, you can speak to about your difficulties. And there is also International Student Center that can provide you information um, about any questions you might have. And there is a contact number and email address to International Student Center. Um, let me tell you a little bit about support plan. Um, you might be able, you might be um, eligible for a support plan if you have been diagnosed with any of the uh, conditions such as long-term mental health condition um, and autism or long-term medical condition or disability or if you are registered as deaf student or you're visually impaired um, or if you have specific learning difference again such as dyslexia um, or if you have caring responsibilities you might also be eligible for a support plan um, your individual needs are normally discussed during your well-being appointment with one of our practitioners. Um, and to set up support plan, you would need evidence of your condition. Um, just a little overview of what might go on your support plan um, is personalized adjustments in exams, um, in your coursework or lectures. Um, or you might benefit from having a hands out in a large print or extend extensions on your library loans. So it's very personal and depending on your um, own individual circumstances. Uh, some of you might know that there is a Get Ahead event, um, for, which is which is like a welcome event for students with disability, long-term health condition, uh, specific learning difference, autism with, for deaf students with sensory impairment or mental health conditions. Um, and, th and the aim of that is to give you the best possible start um, to university. Um, the virtual, uh, the Get Ahead event is running virtually this year. Um, you might find more information about the exact dates and times um, at derby.ac.uk forward slash get ahead. Um, and there is op al al always, um, there is also an option to move into halls earlier in September at no extra cost. These are our contact details uh, to Student Wellbeing Centre, so please feel free to contact, uh, contact the team with any queries relating to your wellbeing. Um, I will pass you over now to my colleague Dave, who will introduce you to a Disabled Student Allowance. Thank you. Hello. Um, so as well as the support that students receive from uh, the Student Wellbeing Service, it's really important that people are aware that if they have a, a, a disability in some form or, or special needs in terms of their learning, that they are eligible to apply for something called Disabled Students Allowances. Um, so Disabled Students Allowances are grants that help to pay for support that a student may need at higher education as a direct result of an ongoing health problem, sensory impairment, mental health condition, or a specific learning difference. And you may, students make their application to what's called their funding provider. So that's related to whoever you've applied to for your um, fees and maintenance for your funding. So if you rely, reside in in England, you obviously apply to Student Finance England. If you reside in Northern Ireland or Wales, you apply there or in Scotland, you apply to the Student Awards Agency. If you're, if you're not in receipt of any funding already from uh, the Student Finance, uh, the, the Student Loans companies, you can apply 
for disabled students allowances in its own right. To show that you qualify for disabled students allowances, you'll need to provide evidence that you have a, a disability, medical condition, sensory impairment, physical disability, mental health condition, or a specific learning difference, which affects your ability to study. And this evidence will need to be sent with your application form uh, to your funding provider. So in relation to evidence required for physical, sensory, long-term health condition or mental health condition, you'll need a written statement from a doctor or an appropriate qualified medical practitioner who, who will confirm that you have a, a condition that affects your ability to carry out your study in effect. Can you forward to the next slide, please, Joanna? Um, or a written statement from a doctor or appropriate qualified professional uh, in relation to autism. Uh, once your uh, the student loans companies has accepted your evidence and they've looked at it and they said, yes, you're eligible for um, disabled students allowances, they will ask you to book something called a, a study needs assessment. And the, the, so the study needs assessment is an informal meeting with an experienced need assessor to help decide what kind of support that will assist you with your own personal needs. So the needs assessor is independent from Student Finance England and they will arrange to meet with you and they'll have a discussion with you about how your uh, disability affects your ability to study and then they will make recommendations back to Student Finance England about support that they think that they should fund. Uh, so they will, at the end of that meeting, they'll write something called a study needs report and a copy of that will be sent to both yourself and to Student Finance England. The study needs assessment centres all over the country. There's one here at University of Derby, but they will, in the letter when they write to you to explain that you've been assessed as being eligible, they will give you a search engine where literally you can put your postcode into it and that will identify the study needs assessment centres closest to you. After your funding provider has received your study needs report, they'll send you a letter to tell you what support they will pay for from disabled students' allowances. And the letter will break down the allowances and display uh, what they will fund. So it will look at specialist equipment. So they may look at software as they think can help. So things like uh, test, text help read and write softwares that can read text-to-speech, which is good when you're trying to process, if you've got any processing issues, when you're trying to uh, proofread your assignments, it can read them back to you. Um, they might look at mind mapping softwares, which can help you to get your thoughts on down onto a, a screen and then start to organise your thoughts. Uh, when you get really good at using that, it can create headings for assignments which you can transfer into Word documents, things like that. Uh, if you've got a physical disability, they may um, ask you to arrange an ergonomic assessment of your workstation, and that could be in your halls or at home, wherever you live in. Uh, and that ergonomic assessment will identify things to make studying a bit easier for you. They may uh, look at um, offering you uh, some assistive technology training to show you how to use any softwares you're given. Uh, sometimes they may uh, offer funding for compute for subsidising towards the cost of a computer if your own computer can't handle the softwares that you've been given. Uh, they could offer printers, uh, general allowances for ink and paper, things like that. Um, they also will offer what's called non-medical helpers support. So that's really essentially help from people. So 
It could be specialist one-to-one -one study skills support workers uh, for that can help students who have specific learning differences. Uh, they will well work with them on a regular basis, one-to-one -one basis to help them to develop their study skills and academic writing further. They could offer um, something called a specialist mentor who's there to help and support students with their uh, study who have mental health conditions or autistic spectrum disorders. Uh, it could be BSL interpreters if you're a deaf student or note taking support, things like that. So essentially that's help from people. Uh, and then they may look at general allowances, which as I said already, could be things like ink or paper uh, uh, and taxi fares if people need help with uh, transport, things like that, if they can't access public transport for some reason. Most of the things I talked about are, are grants. So they're things that you students uh, will just receive funding for and you won't have to pay that back like you will with uh, your fees and your maintenance for your student loans. But sometimes there are things that you have to make a contribution towards. So, but it's up to you whether you decide to accept or, or not accept the support that's offered. Um, can you move on to the next slide? Uh, and finally, just to say it's really important that you apply for DSAs as soon as possible. You don't have to wait until you've had a confirmed place at university. Uh, however, you can still apply at any stage of your course. And if you want help with your application, you can contact a practitioner like myself or Joanna at Student Wellbeing and we can offer you advice and support and uh, any queries about any communication with student financing, then we can help with that as well. Great, so thank you very much, David and Joanna, uh, for that. Um, we'll now move on to the Q&A part of the session. Um, and just to say, we understand that you might have questions that you're not comfortable sharing in such a public forum. Um, so if that is the case, um, please feel free to email wellbeingcentre at derby.ac.uk. But we'll just go through the questions that have come through now and we'll also leave the Q&A box open if you have any more questions while we're going through these first few. So we have a question and it's just if someone thinks they have a mental health condition but has not seen a doctor yet, is there a way to do it at the uni? Um, so maybe I will answer that question. Um, you can definitely contact a student wellbeing centre um, so that you can be booked for a wellbeing appointment. We could have a little discussion with you about what's what's happening, how you're feeling. Um, however, in order to set up support plan, your condition would have to be diagnosed by a medical professional, um, and that would need that would have to be a long-term condition for a support plan in place. Uh, but apart from support plan, you would still be available you know, you would still be able to access support uh, like counselling um, or well-being appointment, you know, so we can and we can offer you some general advice. Uh, we can offer you some self-help materials to help you with your difficulties. Um, I'm hoping that that answer answers your question. Great, thank you, Joanna. Um, we have another question uh, just about the support plan and whether there are students available to help um, take notes in lectures if required. Yeah, shall I answer that one? Yes, please, yes. Yeah, um, so it really depends on, on the need. Um, so why you need a note taker? Um, most, as I said, that's why it's really important that students apply to for disabled students allowances because part of that process, the needs assessment, will identify whether you need a note taker for so certainly um, for uh, deaf students or students who have a physical disability, there will be a good reason to suggest that somebody might well might need note taking support. Uh, so it, it very much depends on on the need, uh, but it's important to remember also that on support plans we tend to always recommend that students receive lecture slides in advance from academics 
and also the, their, the academics record lectures on something called Panopto, which goes on to the electronics, the students electronic blackboard system, uh, or we will give students permission to digitally record lectures as well using a digital recorder um, where seminars or lectures may not be recorded. So we always tend to try and build in lots of different ways to make sure that people are not dependent just on their own notes and their own memory, um, but where students aren't physically able to take notes, I'd be, you know, certainly there will be provision for that, either through DSAs or potentially through the university in some form. Great, thank you very much, David. Uh, we have a few questions about facilities um, and one in particular asks how near uh, the pharmacy is to halls and campus, uh, just in case you need to go back and forth between between there and campus. Um, I don't know if Joanna knows any different there. I don't think there's a there's not a pharmacy on the campus as such, but there are pharmacies very close to the main campus on Kettleston Road. And there will be where the um, the main bulk of halls are situated aren't far from the main campus. And there's certainly pharmacies very close lead to that where students can go to. Great, thank you. Um, kind of along a similar vein, um, someone's asked that um, because of a condition that they have, they have to travel to London quite a lot. Um, and is there a, a way in which there can be help uh, with, with travel and costs and things like that? Right, so it, the, the monies that, that students get from uh, DSAs are really in relation to travel allowance they might get from DSAs are really to do with um, uh, as long as it's an identified disability and there's some reason why a student isn't able to access um, public transport, the student finance companies will consider travel allowances. If it's part of a programme, often lots of, uh, it depends if it's organised by the university, um, the um, university is responsible for um, assisting people with any transport needs they may have. Um, so if there's students who require wheelchair access and need to get to any uh, trips or out or things related to their study, we have a duty to help facilitate that with the academics. Um, if it's just in if it's not related if it's related to the study but more in a, not directly in some way to the study if it's financial costs that are difficult to students and it isn't something that dsas will pay for or the university will pay for or support there's definitely there are things called um the university discretionary fund and that's like a bit like a what in many times a hardship fund. So if students are struggling with costs towards any part of their study or just generally in terms of any aspect of, of, of um, their fees and maintenance, they potentially you, know, you can apply to the uh, discretionary fund and it's a process whereby the university will consider whether it will award you extra costs for things like that. Great, thank you, David. Um, we do actually have quite a few questions on the DSA, so I'll just run through those now. I think they're probably best for you, David. Okay. Um, but someone asks, can I get a DSA as an international student? You can only, the only, whether you're an international foot student or even a, a, a UK national who lives out the country, you need to have lived in the United Kingdom for five years. So, um, if you're an international student and you're just coming to the country, uh, you won't be eligible. Um, and even if you're a UK national who's been, in, been out of the country for some time and haven't been back in the country for more than five years, you won't, sadly, you won't be eligible either. Um, 
But what we would do for either scenario, if there was clearly an identified need in terms of things that you you require support for, and we felt that you would be at risk, your studies, academic study would be at risk without that support, the university certainly would be able to consider whether we would be able to fund some of that support in as opposed to the student loans companies being able to do it. So um, if, if you do feel a need, it's really important you get in touch with us beforehand so mm -hmm. we can have a talk with you about all those things and we would be able to consider whether we would be able to fund something in that event. OK, thank you very much, David. Uh, someone's also asked, um, how up to date does the evidence for applying for your DSA have to be? Uh, can it be, for example, if you've got um, a report from when you're in primary school, would that still count as evidence? Yeah, it depends on the condition. So if it's, um, so say you were diagnosed with uh, ADHD or dyslexia officially by a, uh, an educational psychologist or uh, another uh, health professional, that would be fine because you can't, once you've got that condition, you are suddenly not going to have it. If it's in relation to a, um, a, a, a mm. disability, disability you've had from birth that is going to be ongoing, it's the same again. It would be something that we would probably likely to accept as, as evidence uh, of your eligibility for DSAs. If it was a, a health condition or a mental health condition and it's a bit more important then about how that is currently affecting you. So in terms of evidence, we would need more up to today evidence about that and we can offer advice and support how to obtain that evidence if you big students aren't quite sure. The university is a bit more, we're a bit more lenient about evidence we accept, but student finance income can be very strict. So if you any worries about that, you can always get back in touch with us for advice. There are disability, DSA disability evidence forms that you can simply take long to a, a GP or a consultant and they simply have to complete it as best they can and sign it and stamp it. So, but we could give advice about that. Great, thank you, David. Uh, just a quick note, I'm going to be closing the Q&A uh, shortly, so if you have any last minute questions, just pop them in there now. Uh, so the next question is about the counselling and is counselling only for mental health issues directly relating to studies or are we able to seek support for general issues in our lives too? Um, so maybe I will answer that question if that's OK. Yeah. Um, so every student can access um, counselling or therapy at any time during um, during their course when they're struggling. Um, the the counselling uh, and therapy that is available is aimed as being a short term, quite intensive support. Um, it doesn't have to be related to your education. It can be about any issues you're experiencing or anything that you experienced in the past that is having effect on how you feel. So the aim of it is to support you with whatever is bothering you or whatever is happening in, in terms of your emotional uh, feelings and you know your 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 well being so that you know you feel better in your mental health and then you can you can um, continue with your study and be successful. A lot of our students um, have been successful uh, throughout their course, throughout their education with the right support in place. So it's just about reaching out. Um, so if you are struggling at any point, please do contact Student Wellbeing Centre uh, and they will be able to, um, to to refer you to a, to a therapist for that. Um, if that's OK, if I can just add on to the initial question that we had um, about um, people who are struggling in, with their, in their mental health or maybe 
you know, if you're if you're wondering if you might have an autism, um, but you don't have any official diagnosis, um, we would encourage you to please see your GP as soon as possible to discuss your difficulties, whether it's um, in terms of your mental health or communica communication difficulties, uh, because your GP might um, refer you further to any external services or uh, to put you on a waiting list for for diagnosis if you feel that's something you would like to um, to do um, and in terms of your mental health it's really important to discuss it with your GP um, because even if that condition even if you were diagnosed by your GP with a mental health condition and it wouldn't be long term when you are really struggling at some point during your course possibly second year or so your GP would have that note on the system that you've been to see the GP about that issue so that would kind of count towards it being long term uh, so then obviously options of supporting you would be would be a bit more um, so I would I would suggest see your GP as soon as possible if you are worried about um, about potential uh, mental health or communication difficulties. Thank Great, you. thank you, Joanna. Um, we have a question about kind of facilities at the GP. I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer this, but um, someone's asked that uh, due to their dyspraxia, um, they injure themselves regularly. So does the GP have an X-ray machine? And if not, how close is the nearest A and E? I don't think the GP has X-ray machine uh, because the, the GP, as I said, is um, is very similar to any other NHS um, general practice service, uh, and these are normally provided at hospitals. Um, there is a, a hospital at Derby, which is not very far from Kedleston Road, but I wouldn't be able to tell the exact distance. Um, but I, I would suggest you can have a look on the Google Maps and see where is the university campus and where is the, um, the hospital at Derby, but it's not it's not very far. Great, thank you very much. Um, and just the final question for today. Uh, this might be for you, Dave. It's about DSA again, um, but someone asks if they already have an action plan in place, do they still need a separate plan for the DSA? Right, so the, uh, DSAs are a really thing to get your head is DSA is a really to do with funding for support and equipment and general allowances in terms if if you mean by an action plan a support plan in which uh, a practitioner or like myself would look discuss the reasonable adjustments you might need so things like extra time in exams or extensions on assignments things like that extensions on library loans um that part that's done by the university so it's the university's responsibility for a protect practitioner like myself to sit down with a student to discuss the reasonable adjustments and what goes on to a uh, the support plan, action plan, if, if that's what you mean. <laughs> the essays are really, are really important that people realise they need to apply for it because it's it there. It's a lot of this where students would have been used to possibly at school, or college, that support was all embracing. So any support mm -hmm. for people or equipment allowances and support mm -hmm. and things like that would have all come from the school and college. University is very different in that a lot of your support will potentially come from something called from di disabled students allowances. So any support a student has is made up of the two things. Any reasonable adjustments that go into a support mm. plan, which is created by a practitioner such as myself on behalf of the university and any support that somebody then gets from disabled students allowances. The university will sometimes fund similar support as provided by disabled students allowances, but we usually generally do that as interim support or if somebody can't get that funding, i.e. they're an international student and won't be eligible for DSA. I hope that answers your question. 
Great, thank you very much, David. Uh, I'm not sure, Joanna and David, if you have anything else to add, uh, but if not, that kind of concludes our Q&A session uh, for today. Um, as I said before, if you have any kind of more personal questions you'd like to ask, uh, please do email wellbeingcentre at derby.ac.uk. Uh, but apart from that, thank you very much for your questions and thank you very much for attending today's session.